Jaitapur, a small peaceful village on the western coast of India in a region known for its mango exports. So why does this interest us in relation to energy, technology, and policy? Over the last couple of years, this port of the medieval ages has turned into a battleground for the anti-nuclear activists of the country, India, in 2010. The deal was signed between the French nuclear manufacturer Oliva and the India's NPCIL, which proposed a massive new project in the region, a power plant with six reactors of 1,650 megawatts each, totaling 9,900 megawatts, which would be the largest nuclear power plant in the world. The cost of this project is estimated to be $24 billion, with a $9 billion contract with the French company. So why this place? The state of Maharashtra is India's largest electricity consumer in the western region, but accounts for most of the electricity demand in the state. The city of Mumbai alone consumes approximately 16% of the total electricity produced in the state. These areas face a shortfall of up to 5,000 megawatts at times. The proposed plant location is within 200 miles of these areas, which makes it an ideal site. But the area is prone to earthquakes, and it is also classified under Zone 3 category for earthquake-prone areas, making it a danger zone. There have been a few earthquakes before in the vicinity of the location. However, with the present technology of plant construction, they do not pose any risk. And the western coast of India has never reported a tsunami. Note that the Fukushima disaster was not due to the earthquake, but due to the tsunami that followed. The western coast has plenty of rainfall and is rich in agriculture. So aren't we substituting food production with power generation? Well, studies show that the district has the highest percentage of unsown land in the state. Since nuclear plants require a large amount of water, leaving the coast is not an option. But why is there such a big uproar? Well, the earthquake issue is not agreed upon. Also, there are a lot of farmers whose lands are being forcefully taken. The compensation awarded is significantly low. The discharge water is at a higher temperature than the prevailing. A study by the National Institute of Oceanography confirms that the area is high in fish population and a slight change in the water temperature can prove lethal to the marine living sources. The government argues that too much money has been committed to the project already and hence the only way ahead is to proceed with the plant. The government has to provide a better deal to the farmers, probably giving them comparable lands in newer areas and adequate compensation. The people should be convinced of the necessity and the safety of the project. The way ahead should be one of inclusion. But to fulfill the energy demand, is there any other alternative?